Hi guys, doing a video today on in scale locomotive repair, and here we have a Caddo 2006 or the D51. Um, very nicely built locomotive. The um, what failed on this one is uh, the front axle is uh, it had cracked and then the wheels fell off of it um, this locomotive which is obviously a two eight two has three drivers this front one is not a driver the front one actually had this for an axle I don't know if you guys can see that but it has a crack in it so I gotta figure out how I'm going to fix that because these fit inside of the bushings like that. So I got to figure out a way to, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a bath in alcohol and see if I can put a drop of crazy glue on it to hold it together enough to where I can put it back on uh, this wheel here See, this is kind of squared off. Actually, both sides are squared off. It's pretty neat how this um, it has these two pins here. So this locomotive actually picks up voltage. The tender picks up voltage from both sides. And uh, it has these two wires that run up and actually connect on both sides of these pins. So you have eight wheels on each side picking up voltage. And that's good because you won't have a jerky locomotive. All right, so... What I'm going to do is, let's see here, I will clean these wheels up because I will have to glue this together. And honestly, I thought about just making a new one out of my uh, air duster straw, but better not. Because um, you can see how uh, you can see how the axle is made and it fits inside of there so you only have a tiny bit there 
So this is what I am going to attempt to do. Um, I'm going to give, of course, this part and this top part and the axle, I'm going to give everything an alcohol bath. And then, come here. I'm going to take a piece of heat shrink tubing. And I'm going to slip it over that. I actually already got a piece of heat shrink tubing. And, uh, got it right here. I went ahead and uh, took a piece, and it's actually quite rigid after it's shrunk. Come back here. From that size to that size. And I, uh, it only took about, uh, I don't know, 145 degrees to melt it or to shrink it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a little piece of heat shrink. After I get this cleaned up, I'm going to put a drop of crazy on it. And I'm going to put some heat shrink over that. But I can't let it go past these ridges because it does fit inside of the bearing like that. So I'm going to pause this and go get things cleaned up. There's the crack under magnification, all cleaned up. All right, guys, it's glue time. So, you, take, you never, never want to take crazy glue and, you know, put it on with the tip. You always want to squeeze out a drop. And then you use a needle, get a little bit on there, and you can see it. Yeah, it went right in. You can actually see it wick into the part. That's plenty. Okay. Now. I'll go ahead and. Uh, put my. Uh, heat sink over the metal and we're gonna hit it with um, we're gonna hit it with 145 degrees here
This is hard to do. pretty good okay well there it is heat shrink crazy glue axle repair I think it's gonna work because there's enough room there's enough room in there because um, it's uh, cast for a gear even though there's not a gear in there so we're going to put it together, make sure it's in time, and we'll see what happens. There's the one side on. So uh, one side of this little axle couplers is squared. So I put that one on first because this one here allows you to turn the wheel to get it in time. So, that's where we're at. Well, there it is. All put back together. Well, the axle's together. Alright guys, I finally got this thing uh, in time. I had, uh, I don't know if you can see the, I put timing marks on there after I got it in time. And then I pulled it apart again. And I put a drop of crazy glue carefully inside of the axle and then squeezed it back together with the timing marks oriented correctly. So now I'm gonna put this thing back together and uh yeah see if this repair is gonna be okay okay let's see here the front truck there's a little tiny hole that goes on here. So we're just going to lay that in there. I'm gonna make sure we get it right because it has a notch. You can see there. So. I'm assuming that goes, no it don't, it goes like this, I can tell. So, put that on there. We're on, okay. And... the back you got to get the wires the wires on the outside of these contact pins and then the pin on this comes down Hello. There we go. There she went down. Okay, everything's down. All right, now... going to 
clamp the tender just to add a little stability so it doesn't flop over well maybe maybe we need to clamp the front maybe it'll be okay All right, I have my voltmeter on 4.2 volts. And let's go ahead and let's see here. Let's start back here. Nothing. Oh, wow, that's a, that jumped out. Okay. Well, we can test it right here on the pins. Whoops. Let me see if I can get this pin over without Yeah. There we go. Now, zoom in a little bit here. Now, we'll test it again. contact back here yet that's drawn point one two amps at four point two volts and those don't do anything so there you go here let me lay these on here. This is not easy. I need to get me a test jig. It's not the hmm. it works fine here. That's at eight volts. Okay, eight. There's about four, four volts, point one two amps, and this will. That was twelve volt. It runs pretty good at three volts right there, three point one volts. All 
All right. This one is done. Ready for the test track. Stay tuned, we're going to do another one. <laughs>